Right, well, my name's Graham Walker here. I am at the Betfred World Snooker Championships 2019. I'm talking to uh, Stuart Bingham. Stuart, or should I say Ball Run? Where, where does that nickname come from? Back in the day when I first started, um, I used to, used to sort of uh, play a bit like Judd, go for everything, uh, pot, try and pot everything, and, and Ball Run comes from being lucky on the table. Uh, and it's, it's stuck ever since. I, I remember going up to the matchroom snooker club when Steve Davis used to play, and I had ball run on my on my case. And uh, I remember him saying that uh, you must be a good player just to have a case like that. But ball run, he said, you've got to be some lucky player to do that. Well, let me just tell everybody, it's not just about luck when it comes to Stuart Bingham. Stuart, you're a class player. Um, I mean, your, your current ranking, you're in the top 20, I think, number 12 at present. Yeah. Um, obviously, you'll want to do better than that at the uh, World Championships. Give me a prediction. What's going to happen? Um, I'm, I'm just going to come here. I'll say I've, I've had a good season up till now. Um, it does come down to this if you win a game or two. Um, how the season, how you look back at the season. If you get beat first round here, you sort of, oh, I've had a bad season. But um, got a tough game with Grand Dot. Uh, looking forward to it. Um, it's going to be a good battle, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to sort of see how it goes and say hopefully play like I've been. Well, let's remind everybody that uh, if anybody does know what it's like to be the champion, it's Stuart. But you did it just four years ago, Stuart. I mean, it doesn't seem that long, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of things have happened since then. Uh, uh, we'll talk about that briefly. But just first of all, just tell me about what is it like to actually win? Yeah, unbelievable feeling. Um, a bit of a bit of sort of my brain sort of forgets about it. It feels like it was 20 years ago, but... Uh, Every now and then, it's sort of fresh in the memory. Well, I've got a practice room at the bottom of the garden. I've got the table I won on. I've got a few memorabilia sort of of the of that year, and uh, just sort of pinch myself every now and then. So yes, yeah, still can't believe it did that. Will it happen again? Can it happen again? Can it be this year? Um, you'd be a brave person to say not. It won't happen again. But um, saying my game's in good shape. Um, very similar year to maybe what I'd done in 2014-15. So, um, yeah, just obviously, I'm hoping it will happen again. If not, so what? I've got my hands on that trophy once. That's enough. Now, you were out of the game ever so briefly, but obviously, have you got regrets about that, about what happened? Or, you know, how do you come back from that? Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm stupid on my part. Um, I just had a bet, like a normal punt of wood sort of thing. Um, the thing is, I've been a pro 25 years or whatever it is, um, and that law weren't in the game when I turned pro. Um, it's only of, obviously of late it, it, it sort of turned, it's changed. But yeah, so it was stupid my my part. I held my hands up. I've done my time uh, and moving on. So um, and I feel like it's made me a stronger person and a, and a better player for it. Well, you, you know, I mean, you came back and uh, you've you you know you had a little bit bit of a falter, but then you got back on track. And I mean, you, you, your form seems to have come back quite recently. You've been winning titles again, which is great. Um, how emotional did it feel to actually come back from something like that and actually be embraced by the fans and actually to, you know, to actually win again? Yeah, massive. Uh, obviously, winning English Open. Um, Andy Goldstein gave me a cuddle. That was it. I was choked up. Um, sort of say like, I know what I done. I know I didn't sort of bet on any matches I, I was involved in. I know I've, I've never tried to miss a pot on purpose so to me it's it, I, I know I know the truth uh, but to the, obviously some of the public on Twitter and social media they, they read the headlines and, and that's that's part you're of always going to get that but the fans wanted you back you're back yeah, and, yeah. Uh, people you're that know me know that I, I've never done anything wrong and the ball's up and running again exactly the ball <laughs> runs back so look uh, just as a final point uh, people who've only watched this on TV there are still limited tickets for some of the early rounds available although I think next year's is already selling out but um, why should they come and watch it live? Um, it's fantastic. Um, I remember coming here, must have been 93, 94, watching Brian Morgan play, one of, sort of a local player when I was growing up. Um, just the, the atmosphere out there is electric. Um, playing is, is even better. Um, but just to, even uh, as them doors open out there and, and you see that table, or them two tables, it's just a fantastic venue. And Stuart, this is always going to have a special place in the art. It's where you became world champion. But what, what do you think about Crucible and why should snooker stay here? Um, it's the home of snooker. Um, say f since, what, 1977 it's been here. All the great champions obviously have been here and, and, and won here. Um, it's just got that 
say it's maybe probably not the most picturesque venue we've got um, back backstage. It's sort of a few cables here and there, but it's just got that feeling that it, it's it's say it's pretty small venue for two tables. Um, but when it gets that that one table, it's say it's fantastic, best best venue ever. Stuart, thank you for your time. Thanks, Graham. Cheers.